These are the gates at the uh, Royal Arsenal West Plumstead Bridge end and we'll crown the camera around That's the police reception hut that um, people used to go into on first reporting to the Royal Arsenal workers and contractors alike. The vehicles that you can see here now are in fact contractors' vehicles that are refurbishing the site. We're now looking at the Razra Club. This was the club for all employees of the Royal Arsenal, which had a snooker and billiard tables and a bar and a very nice hall, also sports facilities. Now we're back to the police reception hut. We're now looking towards the uh, building 25, which was used by the Admiralty. And the tall chimney that you can see in the background is the powerhouse which supplied the um, steam and central heating for all the buildings on site. Now look at building 2. This was used at, uh, for offices and it's near the Plumstead Bridge end and at the very top you'll see the date 1938 and that was the back half of the building which was built in 1938. The front half is a much earlier part of the building. This building will shortly be used by the army and I believe it's going to be used for their headquarters for office staff etc. This set of gates that you can see here are the inner set. There was three sets of gates. The very end set which you can see in the far distance were the entrance from Plumstead Bridge. Then there was an inner set and then there was a third set, which is this particular set that we're looking at here. Wellington Avenue is the road in which all these sets of gates are situated. The gates that you can see the back of, the Plumstead Road runs along the back there. They are the gates at the side of Building 2, which we plan to see now. And that was known as Middle Gate House, and they are, of course, the Middle Gates, Mulberry Street. Now the building 2 is in the site adjacent to Murbury Street. This is the front end of building 2 and you can hear the traffic from Plumstead Road in the background and I'm not sure whether you'll in fact hear me talking too clearly because my voice will probably be swamped by the noise of the traffic. Building 4 was a building that was used for housing all the private cars. When I say private cars, they were Ministry of Defence cars uh, that were used on site. This is a ramp which was used for testing vehicles for clutch and brake etc. And the graffiti that you see on there was put on by somebody, presumably an employee of the Arsenal, when it finished in uh, September or December 1994. I have in fact noticed a date on there which states it's um, November. November 94. Building 5. Building 5 is in two parts. The first part there was used for testing engines uh, tank engines and other types of vehicles and all sorts of tests went on there. The far end was used as a store for paper, all types of office equipment etc. This is inside building 5 and this used to be where the stores were kept. That's the uh, stores part of building 5.
hope you were able to read the notice because that referred to the Duke of Wellington and that of course is his statue um, there were cannons to either side of him when the MOD were on site but they have in fact been taken away and so has that other wall plaque on the left hand side there that is building 22 and that was the headquarters of the uh, Ministry of Defence on site that was where most of the office workers uh, were housed including the personnel department for industrial and clerical people it was a three-story building as you can see this is the shell building and uh, we'll get a close-up in a minute of the shell foundry gates which were rather uh, interesting that is the shell foundry gates a rather marvelous piece of ironwork We'll see if we can't get a close-up of the uh, notice on the wall. Hopefully I can hold the camera steady enough so that uh, you'll be able to read this from the screen. It was quite a hectic day when, when uh, these, in May 1991, when they were recommissioned, quite a lot of security went on. That's a bit more of the uh, shell foundry gates. Let's we'll see if we can get a bit more close up in a minute. As you can see, the date was 1856. This is a memorial to the men that fought in the 1418 war that were employees of the Royal Arsenal. The wall plaque, as you can see, is in fact on building 37, which was known as Wellington's Barracks. In fact, it was known as Wellington Barracks simply because the uh, Duke of Wellington had in fact an office somewhere within that building. That's the other part of the building, which is building 36. Building 19, was a large engineering workshop and you can just about make out the railway lines that used to take the trucks in with presumably ammunition and guns and bits and pieces uh, for repair uh, during the wartime that's the 3945 war building 20 was again an administration building for the uh, procurement department and next to that we have building 21 which housed the telephone exchange the ramp that you can see is on the side of building 22 and it was in fact put there to enable a disabled worker to go into the building and work in her office in her wheelchair the side entrance of building 22 and the office on the right hand side the little windows there was my office where I, in fact, used to uh, reside. And the left-hand one was for the uh, head messenger. Courtyard of Building 22. Used to see a lot of activity at one time. Now it seems to be completely deserted. Building 10 with rather a nice clock tower, uh, which of course is the wrong time, and that hasn't worked to my knowledge for over a year and building 10 was used by the uh, APFS for stores and that was something I believe to do with the Air Force I'm not quite sure but I think it was Air Force buildings 55 and 54 were the original gatehouses for entrance to the Royal Arsenal from the River Thames this wall plaque is attached to the side of building 55 and of course you can read it for yourself hopefully quite a historical little building building 
41. There's quite a history behind it, and it's a very picturesque building which you can view from the north side of the river, and it looks quite picturesque from the other side of the water. This is one of the buildings that they hope to uh, use for the uh, museum of the uh, Royal Arthur and West. Building 45 is now one of the buildings from the British Library and as you can see it's having quite a restoration work done on it somewhere in the region, a million pounds I believe. Now, this old railway lever is outside building 54 and it's part of the signal wind uh, change over the points system from the railways that existed in the Royal Arsenal um, after the First World War and in fact up to the end and beyond the Second World War. The gardening club was housed in building 53, the members of the Royal Arsenal, and we could purchase items of gardening equipment and all sorts of paraphernalia from here at very reasonable discounts. Right, river viewing platform. Now we'll climb up the top here and uh, have a look along the river. We're on the top of the viewing platform looking towards the Thames Barrier and it's um, interesting in as much that there's a bit of activity on the river this morning, which is a bit unusual. You can in fact on a good day see the post office tower from here. I don't know what it's like today. Building 33. Quite an interesting building. During the Second World War they made all sorts of small arms here including stem guns. Building 32 as it says occupation of health department. Most people came here for their medicals on entry to the Royal Arsenal for employment. Sydney Street, nothing to do with Sydney Street Siege, but a note is attached to the side, building 7. These few trees along the back of building 7, which is towards the Plumstead Road, there's an apple tree amongst them somewhere, but I'm not quite sure which one it was, I think it might have been the first or second one that we saw. Building 9, quite a modern building in comparison with a lot of the others, and it has all the photographic equipment, which was very modern and very up-to-date. It also has a great deal of video equipment. Building 42 was in fact the Ministry of Defence Police headquarters, where their offices were on the ground floor, and on the top floor they had in fact bedrooms. That vehicle is a Metropolitan Police vehicle. It has nothing to do with, with the Ministry of Defence, whatever. It just happens to be parked there. The ER2 badge is over the top of the entrance to Building 42, the police building. This is one of the original Royal Laboratories, nearly 300 years old and in very poor condition. And this is the other one, and in the background you can see the uh, officer's mess. Now this plaque is on the side of one of the very old buildings, and as the camera is now mounted on a tripod, you should be able to read it. And I'll leave it on screen long enough, hopefully, that you can read it. If not, we'll use the force control on the video. As I said previously, they are in fact listed, these buildings, but they're in a deplorable state and uh, are almost falling down. This is the famous Royal Brass Foundry. And again, it's a listed building. As you can see, it is in extremely nice condition. This is a close-up of the uh, 
front of the roll brass boundary and it looks like the date on that is 17, 1747 or 1717. The date was in fact 1717 and there you can see on the wall plaque. I'll leave it on long enough, hopefully we can read it. In the background you can hear traffic on the uh, Plumstead Road. And there you can see that uh, the building got the Civic Trust Award in 1979. We're now looking out from the uh, Royal Arsenal onto the original Arsenal gates which are now in Bereford Square, Woolwich and they are in the process of being uh, refurbished. This is a map of the historic buildings uh, situated at Dial Square. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to hear me because of the traffic noise in the background from the Plumstead Road. But anyway, I trust that you can see uh, what's necessary on the map. Now if we pan around from the gates, we'll come right around to the main guard house. Now this is the main guard house. This is where the employees used to arrive on foot to come into Royal Arsenal West. This was in the latter days when the main gates that we saw just now in the square were closed and this was the entrance that was used. This is the wall plaque that's on the uh, outside of the main guard house and uh, I'll try and leave it on the screen long enough so that you can read it without moving the camera too, too much. This is another notice that's on the wall of the guard house but it's uh, in a bronzy material and it's almost worn away and I don't think you're going to be able to make much of it. It's very, very indistinct, unfortunately. As you can see, cameras, recording equipment, portable telephones may not be brought onto the site unless authorised. And uh, when I was employed by the MOD, all this equipment was in fact forbidden and you were in fact searched from time to time to make sure that you never had any of this equipment on you. Now of course the restrictions have been lifted, hence I'm able to use a video camera. This plaque is on the wall of the house that we were just looking at in previous footage and it is of course self-explanatory. We have in fact moved slightly away from Plumstead Road although you can probably still hear the traffic in the background and we're looking at Dial Square and in a moment we'll go in a bit closer. This tree is just opposite Dial Square and it's amazing how the wildlife has increased since the site has been vacated. The amount of birds that are now about um, and obviously other forms of wildlife, incredible. There we are, that is the famous dial in Dial Square.
that's rather interesting. There's some dates on that ironwork there, I think 1780. There we have it, a wall plaque on the side of Dial Square Arch, dated 1717, and as you can see, the <coughs> Arsenal Football Club originated here. In the background, you may be able to hear voices other than mine, and this is the location team for London Weekend Television filming an episode of London's Burning. One final shot of the dial in Dial Square. And there we have it, one final shot of the front of Dial Square. As I said earlier, the amount of wildlife on site has increased quite a bit and these trees are now coming out in blossom I'm not too sure what type of tree they are although they're fairly young and obviously they haven't been planted that long in fact I think they were planted whilst I was employed here that is the officers mess and we shall shortly be making our way down to the officers mess to um, film the uh, wall plaques that's on there to give you a bit more information. There we are, the Royal Military Academy, 1720. And I'll leave the notice on the screen long enough for you, hopefully, to be able to read. These are now the entrance gates for the Royal Arsenal West, um, which are situated at uh, Warren Lane. There we are, the gates at uh, Warren Lane from outside looking in. Now in constant use to let to contractors and other people in and out of the site. And I think that's about the end of our tour of the Royal Arsenal West. I don't think I can put any more footage onto this tape. So I think at the moment we're going to call it a day.